gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to Jesus, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall be, see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man.
entertainment system or our dresser, that fine, fine dust, right? That we usually just nonchalantly brush away. Well, it was that dust. It wasn't just a handful of dirt and rock that God plopped onto the potter's wheel. It was his breath. His breath stirred that fine dust, infusing his very essence with us. With us. Right? Infusing himself with the very breath that started man. That gave man his mind. That gave man his, the nerves, the bodies, the muscles, everything that we have. God created that man. Right? So, as God was creating man, right? What was he creating? Right? God in the book of Genesis describes, I gave man the image and likeness of myself, right? The image and likeness of God. The icon of God. It was an icon, right? If you look up the definition of icon in the dictionary, it's really crude. It's something that we don't even comprehend as orthodox, right? It says that it's an image painted on a piece of wood, usually of the depiction of Jesus and other saints. But it's so much more than that. Man is an icon of God. Every single person that I see, every single person that I encounter, whether they are good or bad, right, has the image and likeness of God within them. What we do with that life is a different matter altogether. But everybody has an image of likeness, right? And then, when God deemed to come down and be conceived, right? We, he didn't have a father. God was his father, right? He was born of a woman, right? And he became the icon, the prototype, the beginning. We got to see the icon that all of us were created after. Now, if you look on the walls of the church, we have different icons, right? Different people writing the icon. An iconographer does not paint an icon. He writes an icon. Because every icon itself has a story. Every icon itself, every color, every movement, everything that's on there, every word means something. It's just not randomly put up. And no matter what the icon is, no matter who it is, we are seeing an image and likeness of God, especially in these icons that we have in the walls. Why? Those people that have gone before us, that lived a life as best as they could, lived a life as best as they could, got as close as possible to being like Christ as they could, and still the biggest saint is also still the biggest sinner. But they got as close as they could. And no matter what the icon looks like, right, we remember, right, we use our lips to venerate the icon. We remember what they did in honoring God with their lives. They honored God with their lives. They honored their icon. They honored the person that created them. We, too, are that icon. Every single person that we see going down the street, every single person we see at the store, every single person that we see here in the church, it doesn't matter who it is, those people are icons. And we're supposed to open our eyes to see them as Christ sees them. Of course, icons can very quickly become idols, right? We have icons, but then we have sports figures and musicians and politicians that all become idols. A pale comparison to the icon. Who are they glorifying? Right? I was watching an interview, I was watching an interview with Matthew McConaughey. It was interesting. He was being interviewed, right? And Matthew McConaughey said, the guy asked him, do you pray when you go out? 
He says, of course I do. I, I'm, I am religious. I'm not spiritual. A lot of people say they're spiritual. But I am religious. I believe in God. He says, and I know that there have been times where I've gone out to go out to lunch with some of the people, some of my constituents in Hollywood, right? And I will bow down and fold my hands to pray, and they don't know whether or not they look around, whether or not they're going to be judged for praying to God. Because the fear of the world, right, is more fearful than the fear of God. Should we be afraid of God? Well, that depends. We should definitely have an awe of God. Just like most of us that have had good fathers, I was always afraid of my dad, but not that he was going to come home and double up his fist and beat on me. But I did definitely have that awe of God. Right? He was the icon that I looked to to see who God should be. Why do you think that there's so many things happening in the world? The icons of the world are becoming corrupt. The icons of the world are slowly becoming idols of something different. But we who are Christians, we who believe in Christ, we who strive to become more and more like Him, begin to see the icons every time we look in the mirror of Christ. And if you're not seeing a change in the mirror, then the question is, what are you doing in your life to glorify God? See, all these icons on the wall, it doesn't matter, right, how beat up there is. You look at this icon right here with massive cracks going down the side, a piece of it broken off the corner, right? You see some of these old icons that are on the walls that representation of icons on the walls. It doesn't matter how beat up, how broken, how demolished they become, they're still icons. As a matter of fact, the ones that are cracked and worn, as you can see, they're in frame. They're even held a little bit higher because of the wear, because of the age, because of the care that's taken that they've lasted for hundreds sometimes thousands of years. Just because all of us get worn and weary, just because all of us become broken and bruised, just because all of us sin and fall and fall down and make mistakes and do all these things that just don't glorify God does not change the fact that God sees us as an image and likeness of himself. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have come. If he didn't see us as something of worth, our souls are worth his own life. But that icon that came, the icon that came, when Jesus came, we were able to see him. We were able to put a face to God. We were able to see the person that the people had hoped for since the dawn of creation become flesh. He bridged the gap. He became the ladder. He became everything and all things to fill all things. Today, as we celebrate the triumph of orthodoxy, it's not the triumph of the wood and the paint. It's not that kind of triumph. That the icon of God succeeded so we can see, we can have examples of individuals that lived the life that we're striving to have. St. Nicholas, St. John the Baptist, St. Athanasius, St. Peter, St. Paul, any of the people that we see on the walls, they're supposed to be our examples. And it really frustrates me when so many people who are Orthodox go into the world and say, I worship the icon. No, you don't. You shouldn't be. We don't worship anybody but God. We venerate icons. And if you look very closely, and I'll close with this, if you look very closely, if you have somebody that's done icons 
from the same person, right? The sub, somebody that's written icons. Every icon that you see that is from Jesus, all should have similar faces. Every icon should have a resemblance of the prototype of Jesus. Of course, every one of us have a different image of God in our mind. Everybody does. Everybody sees God a little bit differently. And God sees us, each of us, individually. So let us glorify the Lord. And today, when we, at, before the end of liturgy, when we decide to take a hold of one of these icons off the walls, if you didn't bring your own, and we go out and do the procession, remember that we do not worship these things. We worship only God. But we hold these people that have died, fallen asleep, right? We don't believe in death either. Fallen asleep. That they are asking God to intercede on our behalf, to have mercy on us. May the Lord bless us.